I grew up in Anaheim, California, about three blocks down from the happiest place in the world, Disneyland. My favorite ride at Disneyland was Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Yeah. Love that ride. The twists and turns were exciting. The surprises, nonstop. Little did I know that ride would be a foreshadowing of things to come. My parents divorced when I was three years old. Our family moved 10 times before my mom remarried a police officer and law and order entered our home. At age 19, I decided it was time to leave home, head out on my own, so I packed my bags, jumped on an airplane, and flew to Northern Ireland to complete a two-year church service mission at a time of great civil unrest, referred to as the hunger strike. Following that experience, I flew back to the United States, found gainful employment in the moving and storage industry, and retired from that industry just last year. <laughs> Helen Keller once said, the bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. <laughs> I faced the biggest bend in my road when I was 48 years old, living in Newport Coast, California, with my wife, our three children under the age of 10, and a dog named Quincy. Our neighbors included Kobe Bryant, Carl Malone, Dean Koontz, and Vanna White. Life was exceptionally good. Later that year, I was diagnosed with EOPD, Early Onset Parkinson's Disease. No pressure, right? I found out that the odds of being diagnosed with that disease at that point in time for me was approximately 8 one-thousandth of one percent. The next time you're heading to Las Vegas, take me with you. <laughs> Today, I'm going to leave you with five adaptive principles that will help you abolish FAD, a.k.a. fear, apathy, and doubt. If you're sad, lonely, or depressed, there's a strong possibility that FAD has a hold on you. Principle number one, the only constant in life is change. Embrace it. The Irish have a saying, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. And sure enough, the weather can change almost instantaneously. Life can be full of surprises. No matter what, situ what situation you find yourself in, adapt and find purpose and meaning through it. Principle number two. If you think things can't get worse, you're wrong. <laughs> Life is unpredictable. And we, any one of us could find ourselves in a situation that's less than ideal. If that should happen, sometimes all you, have to do, can, all you can do is press on. The word depression unscrambled spells I 
pressed on. Principle number three. Control is an illusion. Let go of it. Parkinson's has at least 65 major bodily functions that are pummeled by, the, by that disease. And the most common symptom is called a resting tremor. These tremors are interesting because the more you try and suppress them, the more intensive, intensified they become. Which begs the question, why do we spend so much of our time trying to control the uncontrollable? I have to think that one through a little bit. Parkinson's, to date, has no known cause, no remission, and no cure. It's fondly referred to as the gift that keeps on taking. Principle number four. Life isn't always fair. Maintain your sense of humor. Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. There isn't always a rhyme or reason. Whatever happens, keep your sense of humor. Laughter is by far your best medicine. I'd like to share a few of my Parkinson's jokes with you, if that's okay. <laughs> I'm thankful I'll never have to purchase an electric toothbrush. Parkinsonians make the best martinis, shaken, not stirred. And I got to pick on Michael J. I'm sorry. If Michael J. Fox were caught in a 9.0 magnitude earthquake, would he stand perfectly still? I worked in the moving and storage industry for 40 plus years, never once did I imagine I would one day be called a mover and a shaker. <laughs> Principle number five, there are no coincidences, just miracles. See the miracle. I received a call one morning from a client of mine. Her name is Diane. She was calling to inquire whether I moved science laboratories. I said, well, yes, I do, Diane. What's up? She said, I'm moving a senior executive from Georgetown University to our campus here in Irvine, California. And he's going to be my boss's boss. His name is Howard. If you mess this up, Mark, I'm going to lose my job. I said, Diane, no sweat. I'll take care of it. So I ended the call with Diane, picked up the phone, called Howard, and I asked Howard my favorite question I asked senior executives. I said, Howard, what's your biggest concern about your relocation? He said, oh, I'm glad you asked me that, Mark. He said, I have 13 cryogenic freezers with 40,000 brain sam samples of individuals who have passed away with the Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. He continued, he said, if the temperature in those freezers increases or decreases by more than three degrees, it will compromise my samples. I can't afford for that to happen, Mark. I need your guarantee that that will not happen. Well, after I picked myself up off the floor, I said, to, I said to Howard, Howard, you'll be very pleased to know that I have a vested interest in getting you out here in great shape. He said, may I ask what that is? I said, yes, I have Parkinson's. He went silent for several seconds, and then in the gentlemanly way he always spoke, he said, would you tell me about it? I'm pleased to announce that every one of his samples arrived on time, intact, 
without a single hitch. thereby ensuring that Howard could continue his search for a cure for these two devastating diseases. In the last half decade of my career, I relocated no less than 100 more scientists and their precious cargo, all with the same results. Coincidence? Not a chance. Every one of those lab moves was a miracle. The next time you're faced with a daunting challenge, take a deep breath, see the miracle, and remember, opportunity is just around the corner. In the words of Michael J. Fox, King of Pop, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself, and then make a change. Thank you. Thank you.